The French artist Paul Cézanne said, with an apple, I will astonish Paris. Today, we're gonna learn a little bit more about that. It seems like this time of year, everything is apple themed. And then of course, next month we'll be in pumpkin season when everything will be pumpkin themed. But it is fun to kind of take advantage of these fun seasonal themes and to bring in as many subjects as we can. So if your homeschool this month has some apple themed math activities or you're doing apple picking or doing some nature study around apples, this would be a really fun art project to bring into the mix or a fun art project just to bring in any time of year because let's face it, we have apples all year long. It's not just like this one month of the year is apple season. There are a couple of artists who are really well known for their art featuring apples. Paul Cezanne is one of them. He was a French post-impressionist painter and he had this really unusual way of looking at the world and showing that view, that perspective in his art. Cezanne grew up in a wealthy family, but they did not encourage his art explorations. They wanted him to become a lawyer. And while there was a lot of family pressure for him to study law and go into the family banking business, there was a bit of compromise for a while where he tried to do both, but ultimately his passion for art went out and he traveled to Paris. He exhibited his work there and the reception was not outstanding. He was doing things that were really innovative and the art world was looking for things that were really traditional. But he was not deterred and he did not want to paint in the traditional way. So he spent time going on these kind of travels outside, studying nature. He loved to paint apples especially. And he painted them in this really interesting post-impressionist way. So you can take a look at his art with your kids. I will link some around this video for you to view and then ask them, is this how you see apples? Do you see apples in a different way? And really dive in and look at how he arranged things, the perspective he used, the technique he used. There are so many ways to dive into Cezanne's portrayal of apples. It's actually really intriguing and you could spend quite a bit of time there. But another really important point to make when you're studying Cezanne with your kids is that Cezanne struggled with a lot of things that maybe they can identify with as well. Things like your art not looking like you want it to, it not coming out the way you have it in your head, trying to do something that you're envisioning and it just not being quite right and then needing to go back and try again. There are stories even of Cezanne being so frustrated that he would break his paintbrushes or fling his canvases into the trees outside his studio. So while of course it's better to kind of sit with our feelings and analyze them and figure out how we can take a step back and reevaluate and approach it from a different angle, there is something comforting in knowing that an artist as great as Cezanne looked at their art and felt frustrated too, just like all of us probably have felt at some point. So knowing that we're not alone and that we're in the great company of artists like Cezanne, we can take a step back, take a deep breath, pause, and just try to think of a new way to approach the art and practice that growth mindset that we're always talking about and how wonderful open-ended art is for encouraging us and giving us time and ways to practice this growth mindset. Now, even though I told you earlier that when Cezanne originally traveled to Paris and shared his art with the world, the art world, the reception wasn't that overwhelmingly great. But this was not always the case. Over time, the art world saw his genius, they accepted his new innovative style, and his art went on to become really popular, celebrated, and he's one of the most important pivotal figures of modern art today. Okay, now let's switch gears and take a look at another artist who looked at apples a totally different way, the pop artist Roy Lichtenstein. Lichtenstein was inspired by comic books and advertising and commercial art. He actually has this really amazing quote where he said, 
I'm interested in what would normally be considered the worst aspects of commercial art. So you may recognize his art by the style that he has these bende dots they're called where it's that dotted pattern you'll recognize from old printed media ads and comic books and those kind of things with all of the dots making up the shadow of the image. So apples feature prominently in Lichtenstein's Brushstroke series, and I will again link another one. And there's also a full blog post on the Art History Kids blog all about these two artists and a more in-depth write-up of this topic. But his art is really an interesting contrast to take a look at and to share with your kids the Cezanne apple, the Lichtenstein apple, and then what kind of apple would they like to create? because while Cezanne's apples are looking at the realistic qualities of art and color and the more, even though it is post-impressionist and so it's not exactly realistic, but it looks more realistic, then Lichtenstein's apples are totally almost illustrated looking. They've got this quality of um, that highly commercial look where it looks like a drawing of an apple and it looks like and it's so interesting because it's like a painting of a drawing style. So there's like these steps removed of the art processes, which is another whole interesting conversation to have with kids about this particular style of art, pop art. So look around this video for the links to the blog post and these works of art that you can share with your kids and then dive in with this mini intro to Cezanne and Lichtenstein and Apple art and see what they will create. Something amazing, I'm sure. I am so excited to be here with you to share these fun ideas and tips and tricks. Make sure to subscribe and share with your friends who are also on this homeschooling journey alongside you. I'll be back for another video soon. And until then, stay inspired.